Welcome to the group exhibit, Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are celebrating our 20 years anniversary here at Hanover Fair 2014. Now, the fair has been changing over the couple of years, not only the exhibitors and the topics, uh, but also the design. Now, one topic that is recently discussed is the micro CHP fuel cell. And for that, we are going to discuss with um, a representative of Violin the introduction to a market. Not only the introduction, it's success introduction to a market. Now please welcome with me on stage Mr. Alexander Daunsteiner, Head of Innovation Management at Violent. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Have a seat. Thank, Thank you. you. Now let's ask really frankly, yeah. <laughs> what is a micro CHP fuel cell? Yeah, a micro CHP fuel cell is um, very similar to other well-known uh, micro CHP technologies in principle. So it, you have a heating system in your basement, in your house, which produces electricity and heat at the same time. Mm -hmm. From the principle point of view, it's uh, relatively comparable. The difference of a fuel cell in a CHP, combined heat and power plant in a, in a home, is that the fuel cell is the most efficient technology who can provide the heat and the electricity in particular, makes a lot of more electricity uh, in your home and decreases the energy costs um, significantly, which we can talk about later on. And uh, therefore, it's uh, what we say at Weiland since the development we did under the past years, it's the most efficient and the future um, technology of CHP. So you mentioned it's a fuel cell. What exactly in the fuel cell is making it more efficient? So the most important difference is that the fuel cell itself is a physical chemical approach and not a, a mechanical conversion of energy. And within the limitations of a mechanical conversion in the CHP plants we know in the market, uh, you have limited emissions and you have limited uh, efficiencies which you can achieve. And this is different in, in fuel cell because you have no limitations from a physical point of view. And therefore it's a completely new way to provide energy and heat uh, in the home. What status is Violent at in developing those systems? Yeah, we have uh, already started by end of the 90s with our development. And uh, some of you who visit the Hanover Fair in the past years know about that very well. Um, we started with first approaches of SOFC, the solid oxide fuel size already by end of the 90s, 1998. And then uh, we uh, yeah, discovered different technologies. So Violent is the only heating manufacturer who have really a broad understanding of every um, possible CHP technology, beginning of low temperature PEM, which we worked together with uh, plug power in US in the former times, and in the segment of the multifamily homes and small business application. And then we had a time yeah, around 90, uh, 20, 27, 28, where we discovered together with the European Commission support under the framework program six, uh, the approach of high temperature PEM. Uh, where we build up three prototypes for Europe in different uh, countries. And this will be done in parallel with the SOFC um, corporations with it. And we started in the former times with, first of all, Verbasto, then switched it to our today's partner Sunfire in Dresden. Um, so in that time, in 2008, we decided what is, from our point of view, with the respect of the market requirements for the residential application, the best technology for the fuel cell. We decided then, uh, after an intensive technology evaluation for SOFC, because the SOFC has a lot of advantages compared to the other technologies, which we think is the most promising technology in that segment. Um, and also because to the fact it's very easy that you cannot provide two or three different parallel technologies completely through the market. You cannot pay it. it must, uh, it's absolutely necessary to concentrate then on the most promising uh, technology path and this was SFC. Okay. After this uh, we started different field trials again. Uh, we were from the very first beginning as the start of Calux, this big field trial in, uh, in Germany. Uh, one of the partners we installed now in the meantime 120 systems and we were um, from the very first beginning also partner of Enefield, uh, yeah. the current ongoing field trial which we should discuss later on a little bit more in detail. Um, so we have a lot of uh, lab uh, experience, we did a lot of uh, durability tests, we had a lot of experience in Calux in the German field trial and then we transfer this technology now in a more European-wide approach uh, within Enefield. 
So we all know Violin is a renowned company, and also um, you mentioned all the research that you've been doing, especially on SOFC. What are the mm. next steps to our uh, really successful market introduction? Yeah, I think the, the complete industry uh, regarding micro CHP fuel cells is now at a point which is very um, important um, with regards to your question of a successful market introduction. Um, especially in Germany, we have s sometimes, this is uh, um, at least my impression, uh, the approach to say if a technology is ready if from a technology point of view, that means the engineers have developed um, a new interesting technology, we are ready. We make a mark and say that's ready for the market. But that's the only the halfway of the marathon race. The most important thing is to yeah, create a path with your partners, with your suppliers, and with your, at, from our point of view, with our investors in this technology, which in, for Weiland is, is our owners of the, we are still a family owned company, uh, who trust this technology path for many years now. Um, and now comes the path and the, and, the, and the phase where a lot of big investments are necessary in toolings, uh, which costs a lot of money. Um, you need um, framework which supports that, which we should discuss, I think, later on a little bit more in detail. And this industrialization phase is now that what we are facing, and this is the most challenging from my point of view. Because now um, the customer requirements plays a lot of more roles than in the first period of when you build up the first lab testing systems. It doesn't matter uh, who the customer is thinking about that. The only thing is it should work. But the filter is now becoming more and more closer to the customer requirements. And our job is now to transfer this, create the atmosphere to decrease costs, to keep the suppliers, the stakeholders on board, not to lose anyone on the path. And this industrialization phase is now that we're facing, which is an interesting one. I like that because now it becomes really true in the market. Um, and this is what we, what we need now. One important thing is, which I would like to mention today, that we still have a support on a national and in particular on the European wide level at the moment. We have the fuel cell and hydrogen joint undertaking in Brussels. Um, lots of big uh, stakeholders um, leading by the commission which supported that very important field further on. We have Ene Field as the biggest and, and most important uh, practical field trial in Europe at that time, uh, which takes a little bit to, to get really on speed. We need one year to create everything, to find us in the, in the consortium, but now it's really um, becoming speed. Um, we will increase the numbers of installation then towards the thousands we would like to have at the end together with the other manufacturers. And this is one which is very important. We cannot go in the market at the price level we have today. Okay. And if I talk about we, we do not only say Weiland, it's also for the other manufacturers. New technologies and high innovative products is a lot of things which we have to solve in particular to decrease cost. It's completely clear that the new technology cannot compete with already existing long-term existing uh, standard technologies for it. And therefore, Inifield is one important step. It's not the last one, but I think it's a very major one. We've been talking about the, the market. Now, you say that the develop, developer side is ready. Violent is ready. Now, how about demand side? So we have more customers than we can provide systems at the moment. It's really the case. The, the interest is in, incredibly high. Um, I can derive this not only from my personal experiences over the time, but also from practical field trial in Calux. In Calux, we have the Market uh, Research Institute, GFK in Nuremberg, which is one interesting and uh, biggest one in, in Germany, who did through the time really market investigations of customers. So for example, we asked the customers in front of the installations in Calux how they expect to get during the field trial. Um, and normally, you have big expectations. Yeah? Every one of us who have a fuel cell uh, thinks that for more or less, you can solve every problem you have in the house. And, and it costs nothing. Um, that's not true, it's clear. But the normal um, development through this, this, through this customer expectations is when you ask them during the field trial and at the end of the field trial, for example, that the expectations decreases a little bit because everybody knows, okay, we need still natural gas, we have energy costs, despite we have uh, decreased it a lot. So we saved money. The interesting one is that 
the interest in or the expectations of the customer and the satisfaction of the customer in the field dry car looks increases during the time. And this is totally untypical and shows us that that what we have provided in the field trial is something which the customer really accepts. It fulfills the customer requirements, the customer expectations. So from a demand side of po point of view, which you mentioned, this is not a problem. The only thing is we need to show long time reliability over 15 years now because we had not the time up to now. And the second one, the most important is to have the cost level that we can be competitive to existing products at the end. Is the cost level the only challenge that Vylon is currently facing or are there any other challenges? So at, in, in a period of more than 15 years development, you have a lot of challenges, certainly. And um, one of the engineers, which I'm working very a uh, long time now, says um, sometimes uh, you cannot think that stupid as it comes. So um, there are a lot <laughs> of challenges through the, through the development. But the major one is really the cost target now, because the technology is reliable. For example, we have reliabilities in the field, um, in Calux at the moment, and we will confirm that in any field as well. I'm very, very um, confident from 97%. It's not, so 97% of all the time during the two and a half year, every fuel cell is working as it should. It's a good figure. Um, the customer expectations we talked about are very satisfied. They like it. Um, we know from the industry point of view, from the experiences of the still existing um, conventional heating systems, that customer decides, let's say 500 uh, people in Germany who doesn't take care about any costs. We have a lot of customers, they say, from my point of view, I pay 30, 40,000 euros. That's not a question. I have the money, gave it me, and then I install it. But it's only a minor uh, number of, uh, of, of, exactly. of customers, <laughs> a, as you can understand. The major issue now is to get the cost sounds in order to get really a volume outside in the market which decreases the costs. And this framework is what I'm talking about already, that we now have to create this framework together with the politics, with the industry, with the stakeholders, um, to enable this very important step towards a really commercialization of the, of the technology now. For this commercializa commercialization, how is po how are politics involved, or how can politics influence? I think um, from, a, from a point of view, how to get innovative products in, in the market, politics plays in a very important role. And at least from two points which I would like to point out at the moment. The first one is the subsidies which we need in a decreasing way over a certain defined time. We do not want to have endless funding for the products. Not no misunderstanding. We need a definitely end of the fundings. But the customer who spends a lot of money in this new technology needs a little bit support. That needs, we need a further financial support in the framework program uh, seven, which is now uh, settled in any field. And we need to discuss now within the framework of Horizon 2020, this is the eighth framework program of the European Commission, how to create framework conditions to commercialize these products. That's the first thing. That means money, very simple. The second one is, and that is not um, underestimated, is the signal by coming from the politics. If a politician says, I trust this technology, I support this with money, I create the frame conditions in a way that the market can really live from that product, it's a signal also to the customers. Because if my government likes this product, supports it to giving subsidies, it's a clear signal that they trust them. And I think that's one thing which we should not underestimate on the next step towards the market introduction, because if you do not have this support, um, yeah, the customer may question if this really works, if this re really help to uh, achieve the yeah, targets with, for example, national and EU-wide targets for decreasing CO2 emissions and something like that with regards to the climate change uh, effect we have. So the politics do have um, a strong um, function also due to the, our end customers to give a signal um, that they support this. And as I said, we need now a transfer phase um, because it does not make sense to put a lot of millions, uh, which European Union and also the member states of that, also here in Germany, uh, to fund and subsidize um, R&D for 20 years 
uh, when we do miss now the necessary support in the last, I would say, two kilometers of the marathon race. Yeah. The, the Japanese did, did it vice versa. They did a lot of money in the commercialization phase. Uh, and uh, nowhere else in the, in the world are so many micro CHP fuel cells installed as in Japan. Okay. We, I do not say that we have to copy that way, but the thinking behind that is a clever one. Because if you see the German IBZ uh, stand, where we have a booth here in the, in the Hannover Fair, we have uh, with Fisman uh, cooperation with Panasonic, we have with Baxi cooperation with Toshiba, and we have with Bosch cooperation with Isin, this is German comp uh, uh, Japanese companies. So who at the end will win the marathon? I hope not only the Japanese. <laughs> um, no, to be honest, uh, I think um, those who meet the customer requirements, those will win the race. And that does not only mean with regards to the reliability, efficiency, but also to after sales processes, uh, service organization, um, very good planning of the systems plays also a very important role. Um, where I must say with a 140 years old uh, company, I have no doubt that we are able to do that in a very good way. Um, and my uh, expectation is that with the support um, in the commercialization phase, which, the, which we now need further, um, with the experience we had in the market over the past years, I'm very confident that we also can achieve as a, as a winner, even if we are working with a German stack manufacturer, which is Sunfire. And I must say, um, the decision in 2008, which I mentioned, um, to put everything on one technology and to put every trust we have on Sunfire, our cooperation partner, was absolutely right. It was a big risk at that point because you know, don't know, never know what really the outcome is. But uh, with Sunfire, we have an excellent partnership, not only with regards to the technology capabilities they have, but also with the management, uh, with the focus on uh, also SOEC, power, uh, gas to power, power to gas they did, which helps us a lot in synergies uh, with other industries. So this is really working very well. At this point, I'm sorry, I cannot take any questions, yeah. but for further um, uh, to reiterate on the topic, uh, you can visit Mr. Alexander Daunsteiner at booth D50. Okay, other than that, I thank you very much for this interesting talk. You're welcome. And uh, you're all welcome to visit the booth, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.